This tutorial is a crash course on the Qline Edit widget in PyQt6. PyQt6 offers us a whole bunch of different functions, different features, different CSS styles, different signals, all that we can use with the Qline Edit widget. And that's what this video is about. We'll start off by creating a simple Qline Edit widget, then see how we can interact with it, how we can use so many different features that we have available to us, how we can use those features on the Qline Edit widget because creating a widget is simple, okay? But customizing it, modifying it, and interacting with it is the hard part. And that's what this video is all about, okay? Most of our time will be on how we can further improve our experience with the Qline Edit widget, all right? So let's start off. First, I'm gonna create a simple Qline Edit widget over here using the Qline Edit widget class, okay? It's imported from the Qt widgets module, okay? And there's just gonna be one parameter, which is self, Okay, which means that it's a child of this parent, okay, the window. All right, that's what self refers to. Then I'm gonna move this somewhere, and let me just change the size of the window down to 300 and 200, all right, that's more reasonable. And let's move this somewhere near the top, okay, 50 and 50, that's good enough, all right. So this gives us our basic Qline edit widget, that's all there was to it. And there we go, here's our output. Okay, it's a simple widget and we can now enter text into it. But obviously this is basically useless. This widget does nothing for us, we can't do anything with it and it looks pretty plain as well. So there's no, there's no practical value, neither is there any aesthetic value to this widget. Before we talk about its appearance and customization, let's talk about how we can make this practical, okay? So we'll discuss its signals first and the various functions that we can use to retrieve text and also to place text inside of it, okay? And yeah, there's a whole bunch of features and I'm really excited to actually uh, begin this, all right? So first off, I'm gonna create a, bu a button, okay? A simple button, okay? I just want to use this button to kind of facilitate our you know, demonstration of the Qline edit widget, all right? I'm just gonna use it to trigger some functions on our widget. This can be something like uh, click me, all right, self, and just place the button somewhere near the bottom where it doesn't interfere, okay? And we're good. All right, that's great. Now I'm gonna connect this button to a function and in that function, I'm gonna write some code, all right? I'm gonna call this just function, okay? And I'm gonna connect the button to this function. Okay, you can go check out my video on the button if you want to, because it's a whole, it's a very powerful widget, very, very useful, all right? I have a video on that, I'll link it in the description below. Okay, so just connect this We're using self.func. Now in this function, I'm gonna write some code that modifies our Qline edit widget, all right? So b before I access it, okay, I can't just do input dot something, something, okay? I can't do that, because this is a local variable, so I need to, actually do self, okay, this makes it, you know, kind of global within the class, and now I can access it, okay, so I can do input dot, uh, hold on, sorry, not input, self dot input, okay, and now I can access it, okay, I have all these functions available over here, so what I want to do first is just to get the text, I want to get the text that's currently being displayed inside of it, okay, and I want our code, our program, to print that text out, all right, it's a very, very simple use of our program so far. Hello world. And what this should do is click, when I click this button, it should trigger this function that retrieves the current text entered inside this widget. Because obviously if you're making uh, a you know application with some Qline edit widgets, you want to take input from the user, right? And then you want to retrieve that text and maybe st store it somewhere. So you need to use this text function. So if I click this, it's gonna print out hello world. All right, pretty great, right? So what else can we do? We also have a bunch of other functions. All right, let's take a look at those. For example, we can manually change the text on this widget, okay? So I could change this to hello world without even typing that in, okay? And this may be useful, uh, hold on, typo. This may be useful um, to you when you're making your application if you wanna fill in some default text or something. So you could just do this, it'll print that in, sorry, insert it in, 
okay? Other cool stuff that you can do is set placeholder text, okay? You know when you're, um, when you're you know, filling in some forms and they have some kind of grayed out text in there, that's called placeholder text. It also gives you a bit of a guide on what you're supposed to be entering. For example, let's say this was uh, some, you know, this was an entry field where you need to enter your username. Usually, when you're using a login form or something, you notice that they have some grayed out text in there, right? Like username or password. This gives you a bit of a prompt as to what you're supposed to enter. So if I run this code, and we should see some text, but we don't. The reason for this is that placeholder text disappears once you focus the widget, okay? What does that mean? Let me just show you. If I, uh, actually wait, hold on. I never even ran the function in, in the first place. No wonder, that's kind of stupid of me. But let's just move this up here anyway, okay? Let's just leave the function empty because placeholder text isn't supposed to be in a function in the first place. It's supposed to be called when you're creating the widget, okay? So if I run this code now, uh, yeah. Okay, so it turns out it does stay. Okay, it goes away once you enter something, all right? That's how it works, all right? So if I type in H or whatever, it'll disappear. Okay, so it gives you a bit of a prompt as to what you're supposed to add, and once you type in something, it'll then disappear. That's basically how it works, all right? Pretty cool, right? And you can't select it either, clearly. Okay, so that's placeholder text for you. Let's explore some signals now, okay? Let's just remove this button now because we won't need it anymore. Let me show you why. There's actually an alternative, okay? Uh, you don't need to use a button because when you're using a login form or something and you press enter sometimes, it submits the data, right? You've noticed this. You don't need to press a button to submit the data. You can just press enter on that login uh, field and it'll enter the data by itself. Let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna do print here. I'll do the same thing that we did earlier with the button where we printed out the currently uh, entered text. So I'm gonna do the same thing now, okay? Watch, I'm gonna do self.input dot, this is the concept of signals by the way. I have a whole video on this. You can go check that out separately if you want to, but the main concept I'll give you over here. Signals are generated whenever an event occurs, okay? For example, you click on a button, that's an event, okay? And it generates the signal called clicked that we also used. We used the connect function to connect that clicked signal to this function that we created for the button, okay? And that's how the function runs. It's connected to the signal. So whenever the event occurs that triggers the signal, that triggers the function, then the function code runs and then it modifies our widget. That's basically how the you know, hierarchy works, all right? So the input widget, the queue line edit widget also has several signals like this. Well, one of them being return, return pressed, okay? So if I connect this signal to our self.func function, guess what? Whenever, whenever I press enter, it's gonna call this function, okay? So whatever I do here, I press enter, it's gonna call the function. So that's how you actually achieve this. There's also a similar function, uh, sorry, a similar signal called text changed, okay? And if this one triggers whenever I modify the text in this widget in any way. That includes when I enter a character, okay? I type in A, A gets printed out. I type in B, A, B gets printed out now. Type in C, ABC gets printed out. Okay, if I remove B, it also gets printed out because deleting text also counts as modification. So yeah, there are a bunch of other signals. You can go check them on my website. I'll have a link, by the way, in the description. It'll link to my website and all the code that I'm using here and all of the um, signals, entire lists of all methods, that's all available over there. We're still not done though. I wanna explore the CSS a bit, what you can do with CSS. So let's just remove this stuff. Okay, and remove that too. And I just wanna show you what you can do with some CSS, all right? I'm just gonna remove, sorry. I'm gonna add in a new widget, okay? I'll tell you why I'm doing that soon, or you'll realize it yourself, really. So I'm gonna use CSS. Now, for those of you unfamiliar to CSS, uh, it's basically a way of styling your application, your widgets inside of it. You can apply a bunch of cool styles like add in color, change font, change font size, a bunch of similar stuff. You can you know, use those CSS styles. 
CSS is a whole separate topic. I've even made a whole video on it, like a 20, 20 something minute video. Go check that out. It's also linked in the description below. Okay, so yeah. But don't worry, as usual, I'll give you guys the main concept over here. And if you wanna learn more, you can go check out other resources, all right? So I'm gonna do set style sheet. And this allows us to set our CSS style sheet over here. I'm gonna create a multi-line string and I'll begin writing CSS code in here. Okay, so let's say I want to change the color of the font inside this widget. I can do color red, all right? Now, whenever I type in some text in here, oh, hold on, sorry. Uh, whenever I type in some text in here, it's not red, okay, why is that? Okay, I figured out the problem. And that's because I overrode, kind of. I placed the second Q line edit widget without the style over the first one with the style. So if I run this again, I'll show you that it's actually red, okay? And this one without the style is not, okay? So that's basically the concept of you know CSS. Let's explore just one more thing, okay? Then we'll end the video. I need to change a few things over here, the way I'm doing things. I'm gonna do Q line edit over here, okay? Then I'm gonna move this in here. And this is completely normal. This is the same thing as what we were doing previously. It's gonna give us the same effect, all right? Uh, basically, this is just saying that apply the style on the Q line edit widget, okay? Now I'm gonna change something. I'm gonna add something, okay? Watch. All right, now what this does, it says that whenever the Q line edit widget is under focus, apply this set of CSS styles. What, what, you know, I'm gonna write that in here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is add background color. And this says that whenever the widget is under focus, add background color, okay? Make it gray. So let's run this. Now watch, you see it's currently gray. And if I move it off focus, it'll turn back to normal. If I click it again, it'll turn gray, all right? And that contrast is terrible. Let's try light gray, first of all. Okay, that, that looks better. So if I do this, then yeah, the red color and gray don't really go well with, with each other, but that's something we can work out later, okay? But the point is over here that uh, the focus changes things so that whenever the widget is currently focused, whenever you, you have it selected, it'll change, okay? And I think you may have seen this in, you know, in other forms online, the, the, you know, the input form that you have currently selected is usually differently colored, right? It's, uh, you know, just like this. So this is just what I wanted to show you. You can also do this and you can actually apply this across the entire application, okay? These two styles, you can actually, uh, let's just copy the whole thing. You can actually apply these to all Qline edit widgets inside your application just by doing this. Okay, just watch. Just by doing this, we can now have it applied across our entire application because I've set it on the application level this time, not on the widget level. Again, watch the video for, on CSS for more. But here you can already see that these styles are now affecting both widgets, right? Pretty cool because obviously it would be pretty dumb if we had to write this code out for every single Qline edit widget that we made, right? So yeah, this, this makes much more sense when we have multiple widgets. So yeah, that's the end of this video. If you like this content and wanna see more in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought, and hopefully I'll get to see you guys in a later video.